you guys remember that rocket we built outside? It looked like this, right? Remember how I was saying on airplanes they have similar things? Let's just show you what I mean. So an airplane, let's say, it looks like this. Okay. Let's say an airplane. Let's say an airplane looks like this. Okay, so you have a wing right here, right? You have a wing, and you have these on the back. So this is an airplane that we see in the sky, right? What do you see that looks similar between this and this? The fins, right. So this is the airplane. That's, there's a reason why you don't see the... Yeah, it's a fin. it has a fin. It has a fin there, has a fin there, and has one fin on the back side. You can't see it. The reason there's no fin on the bottom like this on an airplane because the airplane has to land on a runway. So you have, you have landing gear like this, right? And a fin would be too long and would hit the runway. So, but this fin up here does the same thing these fins do. It helps keep the airplane straight. If the airplane is steering to the, to the right, it'll help correct it to go back to the left. Same kind of thing. And that's also why you see these big fins on the back of an airplane. If we had put these fins on the front up here, it would never work. As soon as it went through the air, if it turned, it would flip around all the way around. That's why you see these on the back of an airplane. If I ever got on an airplane and saw this fin on the front, I wouldn't get on the airplane. <laughs> right, so the, the fin's in the back, okay? And you guys can stop me any time to ask questions during this, okay? We're going to explain how the space shuttle works. So, space shuttle looks like this, okay? Yeah, so these are, these are our rockets. You know, we built rockets that kind of look like this outside. The space shuttle has two of these rockets, and they're, they have a special name. They're called Solid Rocket Booster. Okay. Now let's. Yeah, those are all rockets. Now guess how. Let's look. Guess how big or how big these rockets are. You know, this room right now, the rocket we built outside was about this big around, right? Do you think this rocket is bigger? Do you think it's like this big? No, bigger. Bigger than this? Do you think it's this big? Do you think it's as wide as the room? That's pretty wide. These rockets are about three meters in diameter. They're big. And you know how long they are? They're about, let's see, meters, they're about 30 meters, oh, 50 meters in diameter, in length, in length. Very, very long. So our rocket was only this long. Think how long this one is, okay? So these are the rockets. Then this orange thing here, we call it a big external fuel tank. This is where you hold all of the fuel for the rocket engines, which are down here. So you have rocket engines there, and you also have rocket engines at the bottom of these white boosters, okay? Now the rocket engines on the bottom, you can't see them, the screen's, too, the screen's kind of off the wall, but these are what's called the main engines, okay? It says space shuttle main engines. And they get their fuel from this big orange tank just up here, okay? A special kind of fuel. So we actually, these go up for several miles up in the air, okay? Those, those boosters go up for several, several kilometers up in the air. And then once they're, once they're done, once they've gone and they've run out of fuel, they actually come off of the space shuttle and they come back down to Earth with parachutes, and we reuse those over and over again. They actually have parachutes. No, they, they go in the ocean. They land in the ocean, and we recover them, and we reuse them. Do you have a question? Can you also reuse um, the um, shuttle? Yeah, good question, really good question. Yeah, you, a really good question. Um, they, they, they said, can we reuse the shuttle? Can we reuse this part here? And we do. Each one of those shuttles, we call, them, they call this part the orbiter, each one of those has flown about 30 times. So it flies over and over and over again. So right now there are three space, well, there are three space shuttles at the end of the program. Earlier on, we had more space shuttles, but at the end we only had three. Well, so the space shuttle actually cannot go to the moon. The space shuttle only does what we call orbiting the Earth. So this is the Earth here. The space shuttle just goes around and around the Earth and does science experiments and also helps to build something called the International Space Station. Um, what happens when you drop the rockets? Good question, really good question. So what happens when you drop the rockets? So these rockets, once they go up to this, this height right here, they run out of fuel. And the rockets come off, and parachutes come out of the rockets, and they land in the ocean. Because we launched the space shuttle on the coast in a state of the United States called Florida. Okay? In Florida, they launch on the coast, they go up, they go over the ocean, these come back down, land in the ocean. We pull them back to shore, to the beach with a special boat. Really? The wings? Yeah, good question. 
So when the space shuttle actually lands, when it comes back to Earth, it lands like an airplane. It lands on a regular runway just like this. So it launches off from the ground like a rocket going up like this. But when it lands, it comes back down and lands like an airplane. And airplanes need wings to fly. That's what, so the wings are what help it actually fly through the air. That's why it has wings, so it can land like an airplane coming back down. Make sense? Can anybody guess how fast the space shuttle goes? Uh, a million. A million! That's pretty fast. That's really fast. It doesn't quite go a million. But it goes about, so it goes 17,000 miles per hour, which I think, forgetting, I think it's about 25,000 kilometers per hour. So really, really fast. Do you have a question back there in the back? Why did we decide to go to the moon? The biggest reason to go to the moon was just because it's this big object up in the sky and we wanted to explore it. We just didn't know what was there. So it was important for us because we, to help, help ourselves, it helps you know, develop our own technology on the ground. And we just wanted to see. You know, the, the question um, we kind of said, why would we want to go there? You know, because it's there. That was something that we had said a long time ago, actually, about Mount Everest. There was a famous quote that we had, we had heard um, you know, about, why would you want to go out to Mount Everest? Well, just because it's there. Same thing with the moon, because it's part of exploration. It's part of in our, in our, um, you know, in our DNA that we want to just explore different things. So you had a question, but yeah. What kind of training do astronauts have to do if they want to go into space? Really good question. So, so it, starts with, you know, it starts with school, right? Astrona astronauts studied very, very, very hard in school. A lot of them have strong math and science backgrounds, and they went and, and they became selected to become an astronaut from there. They train in the water, right? They train in the water, really so good, right? Train in the water. So I'll explain all that. So, so what they do when, when they train, there's different astronauts do different things. There are astronauts who are pilots, right? Who land the space shuttle. So they spend ton yeah. hours, thousand hours. In, in a special plane doing practice landings that simulates the lands just like the space shuttle. So they, go, they, tra they, they train over and over and over again. One of the things astronauts do and that we do at NASA is we are always training for the really bad day. You know, it, just in case things don't go exactly as planned, we always practice that. We do it something called a simulation where we simulate missions and we practice all the things that could go wrong to be sure that when the day comes when we're doing the real mission, that we are prepared for anything that could possibly go wrong, okay? So now you asked a question about water. So water is, is when, when we're here on Earth on the ground, there is no good way to simulate feeling no gravity. Because when you're in space, you float around, right? And it's hard just to simulate that on the ground. So the way they do it is they actually have a big indoor swimming pool that's really, really big, really wide, and really deep. And, the, and they, the astronauts go under the water, they have special suits on, that help them kind of, that they don't float and they don't sink, they stay in the middle, right? And that's the closest thing to simulating like it feels like you're in no gravity. Because you don't walk on anything, you're under the water and you can just kind of pull onto handrails and move yourself around like you do in space. You have a question back in the blue shirt? So when will we start a Mars project? So right now, we actually are already, um, we have already sent um, uh, uh, rockets and vehicles to Mars but never with people in it, okay? So the next step for now is, us, is for us to send people to Mars. So we're already starting to think about it a little bit, but we don't have a firm date right now for when we're gonna have a person on Mars. But here's the good news though for you guys. How old, how old are you guys? What's your, how old are you? How, eight, eight-ish, eight, nine, okay. So by the time we go to Mars, Let's say it's in about 20 years from now, by the time a person goes on Mars, 15, 20 years from now. I will be way too old to go to Mars. I will be old. I, I cannot go to Mars then. They want somebody who's going to be about 25 or 30 years old to go to Mars. So let's see. In 20 years from now, who's going to be about 30 years old? I think all of you guys are going to be about 30 years old. So you know who's going to be going to Mars? It's not going to be me. It's not going to be him. It's not going to be him. It's going to be you. You guys are going to be the ones, it's going to be somebody who is 8 or 9 or 10 years old today who is probably going to be the first person to go to Mars. So that's pretty cool, right? Why is the Earth a sphere? Why is the Earth a sphere? That is a really good question. What Earth has something called gravity, right? So let's draw the Earth like this. Let's draw the Earth like this. So here we are. Let's say we're in Bhutan right here, okay? 
So if you're standing in Bhutan, you stand like this. Right? Make sense? Because gravity is, is it help pointing you this way, right? So I came from the United States, right? All the way over here. So when I'm in the United States, I stand like this, right? Right? Because gravity is pointing us this way. So we see, the Earth has been around for how many years, you think? Long time. Millions. Long, 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 long time, right? So the Earth, it wasn't always a perfect sphere like this, right? What happens, let's say I had a big pile of rocks right here, like this. A big pile of rocks, just like that, okay? So right now, if this was on the rock, if this was on the surface of the Earth right now, the Earth would not be a sphere because it has a big pile of rocks on here. But let's say I took the Earth and I shook it a little bit, like an earthquake, okay? All of these rocks that are all in a big pile are all going to tumble down and they're going to go like this. They're going to not be like this anymore. All the rocks will go like this, right? Just like this guy standing here and she standing over here, all these rocks are all going to be standing like this. So originally, if the Earth was a big, let's say the Earth used to be shaped like this, okay? Over time, when there's gravity, you know, there's gravity pointing this way, there's pointing this way, there's pointing this way. Gravity's always pointing towards the center, right? Over time, as anything shakes, if, a, if an asteroid hits the Earth, if an earthquake happens, anything shakes, everything's always going to want to fall into being more and more like a sphere. So over time, as, as, as these big piles of rocks continue to fall down, they, they, they take less of a shape of a point like this and more of a shape of like a perfect sphere. When you're driving on the road, I was driving from Pardo to, to Timpu just yesterday, and I saw some rocks from the side of the mountain on the road, right? It's because they're always falling down. So you have mountains that are building up for different reasons, but rocks also fall down. And over millions and millions of years, Eventually, it's going to all take the shape of a perfect sphere. Make sense? You haven't asked one yet. What's your, what's your question? Why do you have to learn about solar system? Why do you have to learn about solar system? Because the solar system is so cool. I mean, how do we get... Look at... I mean, every day, you know, when, when, when you wake up, the sun rises, right? The sun's really rising because the, it looks like it's rising because the Earth is turning. Understanding how our whole solar system works is so important to us and life on Earth. Did it snow here this, 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 this last winter? Yeah. It did? So it snowed a little bit, right? In the summertime, do you think it'll snow in the summertime? No. No, it's warm in the summertime, and it's cool in the wintertime. You know why that is? So let's say for a second. I'm gonna, this is why it's important to know the solar system, because it's important to know why it's cold in the winter and why it's warm in the summer. Okay? So you know the Earth. Have you guys learned that the Earth goes around the sun, right? How long does it take to go around the sun? One year. One year, right? So let's, let's say we're going to draw the sun right here, okay? This is the sun. And we're going to draw the earth over here, okay? This is the earth. So this is the earth, let's say, in July, okay? We're going to say this is July, middle of summer. The earth itself, have you guys learned that the earth is actually is on an axis that's kind of tilted like this? So this is the earth in July. Okay, the Earth's going to go around the sun. You know? Well, good. This is in July, and this is in January. So hot part of the year and cold part of the year. Okay? So here's the equator like this. Just like this. Now, Bhutan. Bhutan, let's just say, is right here. Okay? Roughly about right there. Now, when I'm in the summer, okay, I am... If I am looking at the surface of the earth just like this, I am facing right at the sun, okay? So the sun, all of its rays are coming straight at the surface of Bhutan, so it feels really hot. How many of you have put your hands around a fire before? When you have a fire right here in front of you, okay, I put my hands like this to get warm. Do you put your hands like this to get warm? No. You don't feel it. You don't feel the heat, right? But when you put your hands like this, you really feel the heat of the sun. So imagine I'm sitting here on the surface of Bhutan, and I have my hands right now are like this. They're facing right into the sun. So it feels really, really hot in the summertime, right? 
just like that. Now we go around and around the Earth. Now we are in the winter, okay? So here's Bhutan up here like this. So it goes around and around like this. So we're going to go back to the daytime. Over here would be nighttime. So here in the daytime, now we're up here, okay? So if I were to look at this, if I were to look straight up from the sky, Bhutan, like I did before, now look at where my arrow is. So before, I'm pointing right at the sun, okay? Now I'm pointing straight up. So it's like having my hands, if this is the fire, it's like having my hands like this. Nobody gets warm from a fire by putting your hands like this. You put your hands like this. So imagine here in the summertime, if I'm sitting on the surface of, the, of, the, of, the, of Bhutan, I put my hands like this facing at the sun, really, really warm. The ground is facing the sun just like that. Over here, the ground is facing like this. The ground is facing the suns this way. That's why in the, in the wintertime, the sun doesn't go up quite as high in the sky. It stays lower on the horizon because it's down like this. I know it's kind of complicated, but this is kind of why it gets hot in the summer and cold in the winter. It has to do with how you're facing the sun. It's pretty cool stuff, huh? So every year, it keeps going around and around. So this one comes back to July. You're facing the sun again. And six months later, you're facing away from it. Okay. Now, what is NASA going to do for the Mars program? Good question. So, right now, right now we have a a robot on Mars. Okay, a robot. It's a robot. It's kind of like a jeep. You said a jeep earlier, right? It's kind of like a jeep, but it's a special jeep designed just for Mars. And right now, it's driving around Mars and taking pictures and it's digging in the soil and sending back information to us. Because we want to get smart about Mars. We want to find out, is there water there? You know, can we possibly support life there? Could life have been supported a long time ago? Because ultimately, we want to send people like us. I'll be too old, so people like you. People like you, we want you to go to Mars. So what's NASA doing? We're ultimately planning to send a person to Mars. But it takes a long time to get there. It takes us, it takes us over six months to get to Mars. That's just the time, the rocket time alone. So it takes a lot of planning and a lot of engineering time to build a rocket to go to Mars. So we probably won't go to Mars for, you know, it's going to be a while, 15, 20 years. Um, do you have a question? How did you think the International Space Station That is a fan. Thank you very much. That is a great, great question. So the International Space Station is already built, okay? We've already finished assembling the International Space Station. And you know how big it is right now? Take a guess. What do you think? You think it's big? You think it's the size of this room? No. Bigger? You think it's the size of the whole building? Yeah. No. What do you think? About the size of a soccer or football field. Wow. Really, really big. Huge, 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 huge. And you know how we... Um, now, that's not that the whole space is not where they live. A lot of that size is, is driven by the size of the solar arrays. We generate power on the space station with solar, solar arrays. Just like we do here on Earth, we do that there as well. So that's how we generate power. And part of the big size is due to the size of the solar arrays. Yeah, you have a question? If a meteor is headed towards Earth, how can we divert it? So, have you, did you hear the news recently? Um, a couple things happened. One, a pretty good-sized meteor um, hit Earth. It landed in Russia. Did you see that in the news? That was a big deal. That somebody, we fortunately caught the picture in the sky, a big fireball. And that meteor wasn't even, I mean, that was a big one, but it wasn't like a really big one, right? I mean, really big ones can cause a lot of problems. Less than, I think it was a week or so after that, or a couple weeks after that, a huge meteor passed by the Earth. It was close. It was, um, I mean, it wasn't close like you can see it, like when they could eye, but it was, it was, it was within, I forget how many, a couple thousand miles, which by ast uh, you know, astronomical terms, that's very, very close. So what we do at NASA is we actually monitor right now to see where the different um, asteroids are. So we, we know if and when they're coming. As of today, we don't have a simple way to go up and actually divert a meteor. But we're talking about it because we're trying to decide, hey, does it make sense for us to develop a rocket, develop capability to one day go up quickly 
and get, get to a meteor or get to an asteroid before it hits the Earth and then divert it away. You know, there, there was a pretty funny movie out, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was called Armageddon. You seen that? <laughs> well, they go up and they drill the big holes and they blow it up. Now, that would be pretty tough to do. But there are simple ways you can do it. If you know it way in advance, if you know it, like, let's say, months or years in advance, you could attach a very small rocket to the side of it. Not a huge, powerful rocket, but a small rocket. And if it pushes on it long enough, let's say it pushes on it with only 10 pounds of force, pushes on it with 10 pounds of force for a year, that could be enough time to actually push it just to get slightly off course and just miss the Earth. So it won't probably be some big dramatic thing like Armageddon where they're going up and drilling big holes, although that was a pretty cool movie, I admit. But it'll probably be something much more subtle if we ever do it where we will try to attach something to it to help to, you know, change its course a little bit. But as of today, we, 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 don't, we, we can't do it, though. So we just we hope for the best that no meteor you know, hits, hits Bhutan, hits United States, hits anywhere in between. The one in Russia, fortunately, it hit in a place where not many people were living, right? But a uh, photo on Mars. Will there be enough water Oh, will there be enough water on Mars? Is that what you said? Um, oh, to move there. So that's part of what we're trying to figure out right now. Part of the robot's mission there is to understand if life has ever um, you know, lived on Mars in the past and for us to understand if and how much water is there. So right now, we don't have a really clear answer on is there definitely enough water that we can easily get out of the soil for us to live there. I mean, we, we definitely have sense that there is water has been there, but it's a matter of how much can we, can we use for ourselves. So we're still studying that right now. And that's a big part of sending people there because if you have to bring all the water yourself, that's a lot of weight, right? And rockets, they, 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 they fly better with less weight. So we want to have low weight. So if we can have water there, that really helps our, our human missions to Mars. Uh, have you asked a question yet? Oh, yeah, you go ahead. What did you mean? You just said that you can get those dollars. Really good question. So what do you need to study? So how many of you guys like you know, math and science stuff? You like that? Nobody likes math or science? After building the rockets outside, math and science is really cool stuff. So what a lot of people, what I studied to go to NASA is I went to engineering school. Okay? Have you heard of engineering? You know what engineers do? Build okay. stuff. Build stuff. So engineers, they have a pretty cool job. You know why? Because they build, they, they design much of the world that we see. So I look at I look at this, this screen here. This was designed and built by an engineer. I look at our computer back there. You've used computers? They're designed by engineers. The projector, which projects the image from there to here, that was designed by an engineer. A lot of the world that we see was designed by engineers. So whether you work for NASA or not, engineering is a pretty fun field if you like to design and build things. Right? So there's different kinds of engineering. So I was what was called a mechanical engineer. So that was the kind of engineer where you build things you can see. But they have software engineers. People, you know, you've used computers, you've heard of Apple and Microsoft, right? Those are big, those are big companies where they have software engineers who, who design all the computer software that we use, right? You have chemical engineers, people who like, you know, who, 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 who build different materials and different chemical compositions of things. That's all part of chemical engineering. Electrical engineering, people who help design the lights in, in a house, who even design parts of computers, all that's electrical engineering. There's so many different kinds of engineering fields out there that it's really, opportunities are, are endless, so. Um, what, what do astronauts do in space? What do astronauts do in space? Good question, though. Actually, what astronauts do in space um, is they're up there for typically, when they're on the space shuttle, They'd be up there for about you know anywhere between one and two weeks, okay, and they're doing science experiments when they're up there. They're also doing things like getting taking supplies from the space shuttle and taking it to the space station. The people who live on the space station, they live there for up to six months at a time, and they're doing constantly. They're doing things like different science experiments with experiments that can only be done in space, okay? They can't be done on the ground because we because we have the they call microgravity up there. Or, or, you know, here we have gravity on the ground, right? Up in space, you float around. So there's different kinds of experiments you can do without having gravity. So they spend a lot of their time actually running experiments and reporting results back to scientists on the ground as well. 
But part of their time is also just general maintenance of the space station. When you're living in a building like this, somebody has to maintain it. The sure it's in good working order, right? So they do a lot of that stuff as well. What kind of problems? problems? Good question. So, so when they're in space, we, we have different things that happen. You know, we have um, one of the biggest problems about being in space is that because there's no gravity, you know, right now when I'm on gravity, when you're on gravity, you're using your muscles every day. You're standing up, you're getting down. When you're in space, you don't feel the gravity, right? So your muscles can get weak, right? So one of the problems that we have is, is to be sure the astronauts stay in good, in, in good physical condition when they're in space. So we have exercise bikes. We have different resistive machines to help them keep their muscles up. Because if we don't exercise, by the time they come back down to Earth, they won't even be able to move. The first time people came back from space, they didn't exercise, and they could barely stand up out of their chair because their muscles had become so weak. Because when you're in space, you're just floating around. If you want to move from here to there, you just take your finger and you just push against the wall and you float to the other side of the room. When you're down here on the ground, you have to walk. So over time, if you don't exercise in space, one of the problems is your muscles and your bones can get very weak. So it's important that we keep them exercising. That's kind of how we get over that problem. So this is a picture um, of, of when the whole space shuttle, before it goes out to the launch pad, this is a picture showing it go out to the launch pad. To give you an idea of how big this is, look to here. This is a really, really big van, like one of those really long vans. Just to give you an idea of how big the space shuttle is, look at the size of how, and this is one of those vans that holds, it could probably hold almost all of you in this van. <laughs> and that's just to give you an idea of how big the space shuttle is. Now we're at the launch pad, and now we launched, okay? So it's hard to see with the, the, the screen, but all of these, all this fire down here is from the solid rocket boosters from the main engines all pushing the space shuttle up into space. Part of what you're seeing is, is, is steam. So what we do is when we're on the launch pad, we actually um, we want to help reduce the noise at the launch pad. And we reduce the noise because a lot of really loud noise can, help, can, can cause vibrations. And vibrations on the space shuttle can be bad. So when we launch, we actually dump lots of water onto the launch pad to help reduce the noise a little bit. So when you see all this steam, this is actually the water kind of boiling off and making these big clouds of smoke. This isn't all from the rocket itself. Part of this is the heat boiling the water that you're seeing on the launch pad, creating all this steam. This is a part, remember I said um, earlier on that the solid rocket boosters, when they're flying up into the sky, they actually come off, come off of the rocket after they run out of fuel. After these run out of fuel on both sides, we want to get rid of them because we want to get rid of the extra weight so we can go up higher and higher and faster and faster. So here's a picture of the solid rocket booster landing in the ocean. Look at the big splash. Here's the parachutes. And, and, and this, is taken from the, this picture is taken from the recovery boat, which is taking the pictures. The recovery boat comes up to the solid rocket booster, grabs it, and brings it back on the shore. Here's a, here's a picture of the big orange, we call it the external fuel tank. After it runs out of fuel, we let go of it too. And now the space shuttle is in, now the orbiter is in space. These are three engines, okay? The engines get their fuel from the big orange fuel tank. So this big orange tank here holds two different types of fuel. One's called liquid hydrogen, one's called liquid oxygen. They mix together and they form the rocket fuel. Once this tank runs out of fuel, then we let go of it, and this is in space by itself. The orbiter attached to the International Space Station. And we talked about that, how big it was. This is only one little portion of it. So here's a picture of the space station. Remember we talked about how big it was? So I said about the size of a football field or a soccer field. So here, look at this. All the way over like this. Yeah, it looks kind of bigger, huh? Here's the curvature of the Earth in the background. What are these? Solar panels, right, solar panels. This is a picture because this is a hard, this is when this, the orbiter is coming back down through the atmosphere, coming from space before it lands. This is how it starts to slow down. But when it slows down, it's going so fast through the air. Remember we said 17,000 miles per hour? It's going so fast that when it hits the air, it starts to actually get really hot. The bottom surface of this can get to over 3,000 degrees. 
very, very hot. So we have to design special materials to help protect the astronauts in here. So once it slows down to a good enough level, then it can land like an airplane on a regular runway. So because it's still going a little bit fast, we like to help slow it down with a parachute back here. This is a special airplane we have at NASA to help carry the, the, the orbiter. If, if, if the orbiter ever lands at a different destination from its launch site due to weather problems or other things, we bring it back to the launch site with a special plane. We can put it on top of it like a, like a piggyback ride. Give me a video of a space shuttle launch. Here's the main engines. They're getting warmed up, and here comes the solid rocket boosters. There we go. So here we're launching from the coastline of Florida in the United States. You'll see the beach here in a second. I'll tell you in a second. Here's the astronauts inside. See, they're looking straight up. Here's the coastline of Florida, the beach. Here's the sunrise. This, is, this launch is happening right at sunrise turning around, going over the ocean. Look at it, here's the big trail of the exhaust. Here's a view looking back down at the space shuttle. Back down at the beach, there's the ocean. Here's the main engines. Now watch for the solid rocket boosters release. Here they go. They're gonna go. Solid rocket, there they go. Solid rocket boosters. There's the Earth. They tumble back down and to the solid ocean. Rocket booster. Yeah, solid rocket booster. Now the rest of the shuttle keeps going up higher and higher now. And now that you guys all know how the space shuttle works, explore and find out. That's why it's important to be exploring, to help find out if there is life. We don't know enough yet.